Okay, everybody. It's your girl, Herbal Farm Sister. Good evening, everyone, and welcome to my live this evening. So you all, you know, I posted about, um, we're going to talk about lady beetles today. Um, there seems to be a lot of confusion about what's a lady beetle or what's a ladybug. Um, people are going around killing certain ones and letting others live. And so I thought I would do a live explaining what these are. Um, <clears throat> so let's get started. So first, I'd like to thank my contributors, um, uh, Philippa, Travis Dickerson, and Frank Williams. Thank you for contributing to my YouTube as well as my Facebook Live and all the things that uh, Urban Farm Sister does. If you would like to contribute, uh, first of all, if you haven't already, please subscribe to my YouTube channel. It's uh, youtube.com forward slash Urban Farm Sister. Um, if you'd like to become a patron, you can do so by visiting my Patreon account at patreon.com forward slash urban farm sister. If you do not want to use Patreon but would like to contribute, you can go to Cash App at Nadia Ruffin. Uh, I'm sorry, dollar sign Nadia Ruffin. And if you would like to contribute to my PayPal, you can also uh, go to, you can use the email um, Nadia Ruffin at gmail.com if you'd like to contribute that way. So again, I'd like to thank um my patrons again philippa travis dickerson and frank williams thank you so much all right so today uh first i'm going to introduce myself for those of you who do not know me um, my name is nadia ruffin i'm located in cincinnati ohio i'm an entomologist i'm a scientist i'm a farmer researcher and educator I have a degree from the Ohio, from the Ohio State University in Agriculture. Uh, it's a bachelor's in science. I study uh, animal sciences. I minored in entomology, and I uh, also um, my uh, I was pre vet. Um, I have a master's of science from the University of Nebraska in entomology. Like I said, I'm an entomologist. I'm an owner of a urban farm here called Kiwi Produce, and I founded a nonprofit called Ag Academy. Incorporated. I'm um, co-owner of Ag Academy Labs. Um, like I said, I'm an urban farmer. Um, I grow in hydroponics as well as in soil. I teach classes on how to grow your own food, um, how to, you know, grow in hydroponics or how to grow in soil, how to raise chickens, how to raise bees. I'm a beekeeper. Um, so I do all things agriculture and farm related. I um, have years of experience in floriculture. My family owns a flower shop here in Cincinnati called Blossoms Florist. And I have a background over 20 years in veterinary and medical research. Um, and I was also a public health uh, disease investigator uh, here in Hamilton County uh, for four years. Um, what I did was I investigated disease outbreaks. So when you guys hear me talking about, you know, things like COVID-19 as well as any other outbreaks and stuff, that's what I used to do in that position. <clears throat> All right, so tonight we're going to talk about, again, what is entomology? We're going to focus on insect taxonomy. We're going to talk about insect uh, characteristics, talk about the different insect orders, what makes an insect an actual bug. Then we're going to talk about the order Coleoptera. We're going to talk about the family uh, Cochinellidae. And then we're going to talk about the lady beetle life cycle. Why are lady beetles important? We're going to talk about Asian lady beetles. And then we're going to talk about some plant eating lady beetles. And then I'll go over the homework that you guys have if you choose to do it. And um, then we'll conclude from there. So again, thank you guys for joining in. Um, so we're going to talk about what's entomology. So I had this slide last week. Um, basically entomology, it means the study of insects, their relatives, and other invertebrates. So some other invertebrates would be things like annelids and worms. Um, insects, they fall under the um, <clears throat> phylum arthropoda, which are arthropods. So that's insects, spiders, um, ticks, 
centipedes, millipedes, they all fall under what is called arthropods. There's also mollusks, which include snails, slugs, and things like that. Like I said, I'm an entomologist. I study insects. I'm also a scientist. Um, I research insects. I do a lot of a lot of things with insects. Um, I've always been interested in insects since I've been a little child. They just always fascinated me. Um, all the things they do, their you know their their life cycles, all types of insects that interest me, as well as other arthropods. I'm really interested in spiders and things like that. So I do research. I've actually um, you know got grants for do research projects and things like that. So. I love insects. I love other arthropods. So entomology can be broken down in many types of branches. Um, last week we went over insect ecology. This week we're going to go over insect taxonomy. Um, the reason I wanted to focus on the taxonomy because I know people call lady beetles lady bugs, and I want to explain what an actual bug is. But first we have to understand what taxonomy is. All right. So insect taxonomy. Uh, taxonomy um, in general is a process I identify and classify in living organisms. Taxonomists study organisms and identify them based on their characteristics. These characteristics might be visible, physical characteristics. Like say if you're looking at an insect and you know they have you know wings or antenna or certain types of legs and things like that, that would be physical characteristics. Or they can look at their genetics. They can actually look at their chromosomes and their DNA and things like that and determine if, you know, in these particular insects are related. If they're not, then they need to go in their own categories and things like that. So insect taxonomy is a study of the classification of insects. They are classified in orders, families, tribes, genera, and species. So we have a little chart here. It's just showing how uh, the animal kingdom is broken down. Um, so you have, you know, the phylum. We have arthropods. Then we can take arthropods and break that down to arachnids and insects, arachnids and things like spiders, ticks, uh, mites, um, scorpions, things like that. They have eight legs and all types of other stuff going on. And then you have other, uh, you know, phylum that fall under there, like centipedes and things. They're their own phylums and stuff like that. And then you have insects. So insects, they can be broken down based off if they, you know, are uh, undergo a certain type of uh, metamorphosis and things like that. Um, so then you go from order to family to genius to species. And then when it comes to families, you can break families. There can be super families. And you can break families down to tribes and clades and things like that. So it can get kind of, you know, intense with the whole categorization. Um, but I want to kind of just get into this a little bit to explain, like, you know, why certain things are not bugs and things like that. So insects in general, their, their normal characteristics are they have an exoskeleton, they have three body regions, which is the head, thorax, and abdomen. They have compound and, a sim and simple eyes. Um, they have six legs. Most insects have wings in the, in the adult stage. The larva or the small or the uh, juvenile stages do not have wings, um, but there are some wingless insects. Um, they also have mouth parts, and mouth parts can be modified into chewing mouth parts, sucking. Uh, siphons, rasping, all types of different mouth parts. Um, but in general, they're going to have three body parts, wings, antenna, and things like that. Does anybody have any questions? All right, so insect taxonomy. So insects can be broken down based off their metamorphosis. So metamorphosis is when they go from egg to an adult. All insects start out from eggs. Um, whether they're laid or they're you know, kept in, inside the, the mother and she gives live birth, they all start from eggs. Now, it breaks down to where, where either they're going to have complete metamorphosis, which includes an egg, larva, or pupa, then the adult, or you can have incomplete metamorphosis where you have an egg, then you have what are called nymphs, and then you have an adult. <clears throat> all right, so... Some incomplete metamorphosis orders. I'm not going to go through all of these, but these are the insects that will undergo incomplete metamorphosis. So things like dragonflies or earwigs or grasshoppers, praying mantids, mayflies, termites, uh, the true bugs, which we'll get into in a second. These are insects that will undergo what is called incomplete metamorphosis, where they actually, um, you know, they gradually, they molt, which just means they shed their skin and they turn into adults eventually. Now, 
Uh oh, where's my complete medical records? Oh, I don't know what happened to my slide. Um, so insects that undergo complete metamorphosis are things that, you know, have the egg, larva, pupa, adult. The most common one would be, you know, the um, butterflies, moths, you know, they go from the, the egg to caterpillar, either the chrysalis or the pupa, and then they have a, we have a moth or we have a butterfly, depending on what, what we have present there. But there's other things that go undergo complete metamorphosis, like bees, um, wasps, uh, and we're going to talk about beetles in a minute. They undergo complete metamorphosis. All right. So what is an actual bug? So I hear people all the time calling ladybugs bugs. Um, their actuality, they're not bugs because they do not belong to this order called Hemiptera. So Hemiptera are true bugs. All bugs are insects, but not all insects are bugs. Um, the order Hemiptera contains the true bugs. It should be referred to as such. An example of true bugs are bed bugs, stink bugs, squash bugs, kissing bugs. Um, they all fall under this order Hemiptera. Um, things like leaf hoppers. Uh, 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 I can't think of any other bugs right now. Uh, assassin bugs, things like that. They all fall under this order. So. Um, these are true bugs. When you say bug, you're politically correct when you're referring to one of these insects. Now, if you call any other insect, say a fly or a lady beetle, uh, which we call ladybugs, uh, you'll be incorrect because they are not true bugs. They do not fall under this order. So I just wanted to clear, clarify that and clear that up. So the order Coleoptera, which contains the beetles. Uh, Coleoptera, uh, with about 4, 400,000 known, has four, about 400,000 known species, is the largest of all insect orders. Um, almost 40% of uh, described insects, and it's about 25% of known animal life. So, Coleoptera are the beetles. They, they are the most populous animal on the planet. Um, if you know, if you wanted to pull out an animal, you could always talk about a beetle because they're they're the most populated. We have four hundred thousand known species, and there's they find more like every day um, that they end up describing and you know categorizing in a family and things like that. So there are twenty four super families of of beetles. There's two hundred eleven families. Uh, there's five hundred and forty one subfamilies. There's one thousand six hundred sixty three tribes and seven hundred and forty sub tribes. Um, the family that we're going to focus on today is called uh, Coccinellidae. So the Coccinellidae, these are the lady beetles. Um, lady beetles can, can be found worldwide. The only place you will not find them is in Antarctica because it's too cold for any insects to live there. Um, there's 6,000 species uh, that they have found at that fall under this lady beetle family. The family is commonly known as lady bugs in North America, but they are not true bugs. They are known as lady birds in Britain and other parts of the English speaking world, but they are not birds. Um, they have basic body characteristics. They have this dome shaped body. And you have a little picture there of a lady beetle. Um, they had hard outer wings. They have membranous wings that lie underneath those hard uh, uh, outer wings that are called the outer wings are called the elytra, and then they have chewing mouth parts. Um, so people always think lady beetles are just red and black with spots, and that is not the case. Uh, like I said, there's about six thousand known described species of lady beetles, um, and they come in all different colors. Um, some of them, you know, that dome shape can be kind of elongated and things like that. Most of them are predators, which means they feed on other insects or other arthropods, usually soft body things. They really love aphids and they love scale insects. Uh, but there are some that feed on uh, nectar and pollen along with insects or, you know, and then there's some that are actually that feed on fungi. Uh, there's a particular species, that yellow and black one on there, it actually feeds on fungi, uh, powdery mildew on plants. And then there's one subfamily that actually feeds on vegetation. And we'll talk about that one in a little bit. So all lady beetles undergo what is called complete metamorphosis. So they go from an egg to a larva to a pupa, then an adult. So here we have like a, 
quick uh, synopsis of their reproduction. So we have in this top photo, we have male and female mating. They lay eggs. The legs are usually yellow. They're in the clusters like this on a plant. Uh, the larvae will hatch out, um, and they look like they call them little alligators. But I know people they see these on a plant and they instantly want to kill them because they do not know that they're lady beetle larvae. But these are what lady beetle larvae look like. Now they can be different colors depending on the actual species of lady beetle. Um, some of them can be, you know, orange and black. Some of them are yellow. Some of them are like uh, a reddish color. Depending on the species, their larva, they may kind of look like the adults as far as color wise, but they do not look like the adults, you know, as far as them looking like beetles. Um, <clears throat> then what they do, they go through uh, five uh, larval stages. They'll shed their skin, they'll get bigger, and then they eventually will pupate. And then when they pupate, they will turn into adults and they'll merge as an adult. And there's a newly emerged adult that hasn't, uh, you know, fully dried out and got their color yet. Um, but they undergo a complete metamorphosis. So they're going to go through an egg, larva, pupil, and adult stage. Um, and you just need to know when you're out, especially in your gardens or on your farms, you need to know what these eggs look like so you're not removing the wrong eggs you want lady beetles in your gardens. Well, you want certain ones. When we talk about those leaf-eating ones, you don't want those there. Um, but, you know, they're very important. They're very beneficial. Like I said, they feed on things like aphids and scales, things that we don't want feeding on our crops. And so they're, you know, you want them there. So why are they important? Like I was saying, lady beetles are considered beneficial insects because they help rid our areas of crop-damaging aphids, mealybugs, and other destructive insects. Both the adults and the larva are predators. So here we have an adult eating an aphid. Here we also have a larva eating. It looks like a um, some type of stink bug or some type of um, some type of true bug um, nymph. So they will eat. You know, like when you have stink bugs or other type of true bugs on your plants. They will eat those nymphs. They will eat their eggs and things like that. So they are beneficial when it comes to even controlling those uh, populations of insects. So anybody have any questions? I know I saw one or I saw a comment. So the Jackster said, greetings and blessings. Happy Mother's Day. Thank you. Preachable Assets said, hello, everyone. Hello, Preachable Assets. Um, Bank 80 said, I thought dragonflies had complete metamorphosis. No, they undergo an incomplete, it's also called gradual, um, where they actually, they they have an aqua aquatic stage where their nymph, which is called a naiad, lives in the aquatic stage in water. And they're actually predators in the water. They feed on, a lot of times they feed on mosquito larvae. But they will feed on other things that are in the water as well, um, just because they're generalist pests. Uh, I'm sorry, predators. Um, but they undergo undergo what is called a gradual, which is still an incomplete um, metamorphosis. They do not have an egg larval pupil stage. They don't have that pupil stage where they, you know, turn into a pupa. They just eventually emerge as an adult out of the water. Pupal acid said a bug is a critter. <laughs> Miss Ivana wants to know how long does it take to go from egg to adult? It takes about two weeks. Um, two weeks to 21 days. It depends on the species of uh, <clears throat> lady beetle that you're dealing with. Uh, but for the most part, it takes about two weeks to 21 days. A lot of insect development, not just, you know, when we talked about mosquitoes, a lot of insect development is based off temperature. Um, so, you know, the warmer it is, the faster they're going to develop versus, you know, when it's cooler, that slows down insect development. Um, but yeah, it can take about 21 days. Good questions. Uh, all right. So now I'm going to talk about the multicolored Asian lady beetle, or just known as the Asian lady beetle for short. 
Uh, this beetle is actually native to Asia. The beetle initially was introduced to the United States in 1918 to control aphid populations on crops in Canada and USA. Uh, during the 1960s to the 1990s, the U.S. Department of Agriculture attempted to establish the Asian lady beetle to control agricultural pests, especially on pecan and apple trees. Large numbers of these beetles were released in several states, including Georgia, South Carolina, uh, Louisiana, Mississippi, California, Washington, Pennsylvania, Connecticut, and Maryland. They've since spread pretty much across North America. Uh, we have a map here of where they are. Um, but yes, the multicolored Asian lady beetle, they can come in a variety of colors and spots, and some of them have no spots. They become black. Um, they have just a lot of diversity amongst this genus of beetles. And like I say, they originated from Asia, and where they come from, they're climate is very similar to here in the United States. So that's why they were eventually able to establish populations in those, those states that they were able, they were able to release them. Um, back in the 1918, when they initially released them, they were, they had to keep bringing them over because some reason they just would not take. Um, but I guess, you know, as humans started building things um, and they started overwintering people's houses, they were able to establish populations that eventually were able to spread across this country, as well as in Canada and parts of Mexico. So they have become a nuisance, however. Um, reason being, like I just said, they overwinter in people's homes. Um, so what happens is all lady beetles that live in temperate zones where it gets cold, uh, most of them will do what is called an aggregation where they'll all aggregate together in a certain place. Now, most lady beetles stay outside and they'll aggregate in under, you know, um, leaf litter, under logs and trees and things. Well, these particular beetles, they decided that they want to overwinter in people's houses because it's nice and warm in there. So what happens is during October, they all start to send out an aggregation pheromone when they find a suitable place to overwinter. And that pheromone attracts all the beetles in that area and then they'll all overwinter say in someone's basement or up in somebody's attic or wherever they were able to get into your house they'll all aggregate there um the problem with these are is that because they're choosing the, your house to aggregate in um you know they're producing waste because they're they're not really sleeping they're just trying to stay warm so they're kind of active they're not feeding or anything but they're producing waste and things this is yellow liquid they can stain as well as these particular lady beetles do bite um, if they feel threatened. So they will bite you. Um, <clears throat> another issue with them being an introduced species, you know, we talked about that when we were talking about the, uh, the uh, Asian giant hornet, is that they were introduced, which means they're not native to this land. And so what happens is when they came over and they were able to establish their population, they actually started competing with native lady beetle populations for, you know, um, food as well as these particular lady beetles because they're larger they can feed on other lady beetles especially their eggs and their larva um, so a lot of times these lady beetles they they not they won't only eat aphids and scales they'll eat anything that's crawling on that plant that they're on so they have you know competed with the native ones to the point that you know they have pushed some populations like out of an area and they they pretty much dominate this area now. Um, so that's one of the issues. Even though they have these negative, you know, attributes about them, they are still very efficient at eating pest insects. And so they, they, they're still a beneficial lady beetle. So, so we're talking about Asian lady beetles. I want to talk about the convergent lady beetle. This is the one people always call a lady bug. Um, Basically, both are lady beetles, and they all they both belong to the family uh, Coccinellidae. Neither are bugs. Um, that's just a common name that you know Americans give these particular beetles, but they're not bugs. Again, they do not belong to the order Hemiptera. They belong to Coleoptera, which are beetles. Um, both are efficient at eating aphids and other soft-bodied insects. 
The convergent lady beetle is native to this land, but the Asian lady beetle is an introduced species. But it was introduced because native populations, they were not as efficient at getting the, you know, the pest off the crops. So they brought these in because they were, you know, really, really efficient and they could kind of control their populations and things. And they could keep them in a certain area to an extent, but then they, you know, they were able to establish and spread. Um, but they brought them in to help control crop pests. So I know when people see, when they see lady beetles, and if they if they think they see an Asian lady bee, like I told you, there's 6,000 different types of ladybugs that they know of, and there's probably that many more that they don't know about yet. Um, they want to go and kill the Asian lady beetles because they say they're I've heard them be called parasites, but they're not parasites because they don't live on something. Um, I heard them call their pests. They can be a nuisance. But I wouldn't really call them a pest because, you know, they're not eating your vegetation and things. They've used to become a nuisance in the fall when they come into your home, but they don't really, they don't feed on anything in your house or anything like that. Um, but all I'm trying to say is that they both, are beneficial it's just one is a little bit more aggressive than the other as far as it will bite you the convergent lady beetle is not aggressive to the point where it'll bite you but that asian lady beetle will um but you just, you just don't handle any of them um if you don't really know what you're looking at instead of you going and killing it because you could actually be killing a convergent lady beetle especially when you see aggregations out in the wild you'll assume that it's the asian lady beetle but it could actually be convergence and they because you know they they will um, aggregate for mating. They will aggregate when it's time to, you know, go and hibernate for the winter. Um, so there's different reasons why they aggregate. And so if you see a big population of red and black beetles, not, you know, red and black nymphs of true bugs, um, this could be an indication that they're aggregating. And you, you want to make sure you're, if you're killing something, you want to make sure you're not killing the wrong one, which neither one of them are wrong one. They both, like I said, they're both beneficial. So I don't want you going out killing lady beetles, thinking it's an Asian lady beetle and calling them bad and all this stuff. They were brought here by the United States government to, you know, address an issue. It wasn't like they purposely came here to destroy populations. They were brought here to serve a purpose. <clears throat> so... Now we're gonna talk about some plant eating lady beetles. Now these are the bad lady beetles. These are the ones you could should be concerned about, especially if you're growing certain types of plants. Um, the first one is the Mexican bean beetle. Uh, these are actually native to southern Mexico. Uh, they are a species of lady beetle that's an agricultural pest. Uh, both the adult and the larva stage feed on bean plants. So this could be cow peas, black eyed peas. Soybean, uh, they also may attack munge, uh, azuki, uh, velvet beans, alfalfa, snap beans, lima beans, and clover. And they will, like I said, they will feed on soybeans. So they become a real problem in soybean, uh, on soybean farms, you know, when they have those big operations. Um, they're found in the United States and most states east of the Rocky Mountains. And they also found in Mexico. But this is what they look like. So they're kind of like uh, their larva, like a yellow color, and they have these like spines. Um, their spines are yellow. Now, when we talk about the next one, their spines are black, um, but they look very similar to each other. And they're in the same uh, uh, genus. So the adults, they, they can look kind of orangish color to like a yellow color, um, but when you see them, you will find them on bean plants. So um, they'll be feeding on the leaves of bean plants. They will defoliate a plant. So that means they will take all the leaves off if it's, if it's a bad infestation and they could cause, you know, irreversible damage to that plant. Or they could, um, <clears throat> you know, kill if it's a small young plant, they could actually kill that plant. Uh, right down here is where we, this is the damage that they cause on these leaves at the bottom. Um, so they'll feed on the leaves and then the larva will, you know, pupate and then they'll merge as adults and then they'll mate and they'll keep the cycle going until it gets cold. All right. 
So the next plant eating lady beetle is the squash lady beetle. Uh, this is a species of lazy beetle that's also an ag another agricultural pest. Both the adults and larvae feed on squash plant leaves. So this includes cucumbers, squash, pumpkin, watermelon, anything that falls on that cucurbit or that squash family, they will feed on those leaves. Um, these are found in the eastern part of the United States. So again, here are the larvae. So their larvae are yellow also, but then they also have black like spines that stick up. The other one, and go back. So you can see on the picture, they didn't have those black spines, they're just yellow, um, but they look very similar. The adults, uh, so these adults, they look more orange color. They have black spots. They look like ladybugs or as you got, lady beetles, as you guys call them, ladybugs. But, you know, they, um, they feed on vegetation. They are not predatory. So if you see these particular lady beetles, you want to check and make sure, number one, it's not a beneficial uh, species. If you see them actually chewing on the leaves, then you know that you actually have these squash lady beetles. Same thing with these uh, <clears throat> Mexican bean beetles. If you're looking on your plant and you want to know if you have you know, a beneficial lady beetle or a pest lady beetle, look and see, are they actually feeding on the leaves? You'll see them chewing uh, if they're actually feeding on the leaves. Mm -hmm. All right. So any questions? Let's see. I got a few questions over here. DG on five one three. I said I appreciate your uploads. Thank you. Um, Frank Williams said, "How is it that these beetles are named after women? Hence, ladybug or beetles. <laughs> it was just the name." Um. I forget the story behind it. it. It had to do something with uh, like a cloak that a woman would wear over in England or something. That's what their elytra reminds them of. So it's like a some kind of cloak that women would wear. Um, so that's how they get the name Lady. Um, but there's males in there as well. So it's Lady Beetles. They're still males. <clears throat> Does the Mexican be does the Mexican beetle have a nemesis? Um, I mean, other lady beetles can come in and eat their their larva as well as their eggs. So if you had like those Asian lady beetles, if they were in that area, they may feed on those uh their eggs as well as those larva. Um, also other insects are you know other arthropods things like spiders will feed on lady beetles, um, uh, praying mantids. So there's, there's a number of, you know, predatory true bugs, um, like assassin bugs and things like that. They may feed on them. So there's other things that will feed on, uh, these lady beetles, whether they're the beneficial ones or the pest ones. Any other questions? All right, so when I'm like on uh, Instagram and YouTube and people will post pictures, uh, they will post pictures of these two beetles and they'll be like, oh, I got lady beetles on my such and such plant and they're protecting them. Or they won't say lady beetles, they'll say ladybugs. So I got these, these striped and spotted ladybugs on my plants and uh, they're protecting them and I have to quickly make a comment and I say those are not lady beetles. Those are cucumber beetles. Um, cucumber beetles, they're in a whole different family. And I don't want to I don't want to give all that information out because that's one of the homework questions about uh, cucumber beetles. But they're in a whole different family of beetles and they actually feed on vegetation. They can actually transmit uh, viruses and things from plants and things like that. So these actual beetles will destroy your plants. So these are not lady beetles. Um, the first one is a striped cucumber beetle, and the second one is a spotted cucumber beetle. Um, they're yellow. The spotted ones are yellow with black spots, and then the striped ones are kind of like an orangish, yellowish color with black stripes as well. Um, but they are pests. These are not beneficial insects. So when you see them, the adults fly. They're hard to catch. So you want to, um, you know, if you can like cover your plants until it's time for them to be pollinated, 
is to your advantage because you do not want these guys on there. Like I said, they feed on the leaves and they can also transmit diseases uh, from plant to plant, viruses, uh, um, some bacterial things as well. All right, so conclusion. Um, there are thousands of different types of lady beetles. They are not all red with black spots. All are not predators. Um, Asian lady beetles are lady bugs too, so if you guys want to call them lady bugs. Um, but ladybugs are not true bugs. They should not be referred to as such. You should call all of these lady beetles. The convergent one, even though it's called the convergent ladybug, it should be called the convergent lady beetle. Um, they're all beetles. They're not bugs. When you see a fly, that is not a bug. When you see a beetle, that is not a bug. Now, if you see a bed bug, that is a bug. <laughs> all right. So any questions? I know it wasn't a long presentation today. Um, I just wanted to, you know, clear up some confusion about the the beetles, the lady beetles, and what ladybugs are, and and want people to stop trying to decipher which one is which, and so they can kill one or the other and things like that. Um, leave the Asian lady beetles alone. Yes, they do bite. You'll live if one bites you, but for the most part, if you leave them alone, they will just feed on the, you know, the uh, aphids and the scales and the things that are on your plants. That's what they were brought here for. Um, they do overwinter in your home, so, you know, you can do things to prevent them from coming in, you know, find open cracks and things, seal off doors, windows that will prevent them from getting in. Uh, you know, they're not the only insects that come in people's homes now. We have stink bugs that make their way in as well. So... Um, it's just to your benefit to, you know, make sure you're closing off access to not just lady beetles, but, you know, stink bugs, uh, roaches, all types of insects and, you know, other animals and things uh, that can make their way in, in in the tiniest of spaces. You just want to make sure those things are closed off. All right. So we got some homework questions. Anybody have any questions about what I talked about as far as it pertains to the lady beetles and things like that? Um the first homework question is, our, um, the assignment is, what? write a page discussing the two types of cucumber beetles. Tell me what family they belong to, their life cycle, the host plants of each, and which life form is the destructive one. Uh, the second question is, research a beetle of your choice. Tell me first why you chose that particular beetle. Then tell me the family it belongs to. Is it a beneficial or is it not? What is the life cycle? and any cool or interesting facts about it. Um, and so if you choose to do this homework, please, you can email it to urbanfarmsister at gmail.com. <clears throat> all right, so all of this information will go up on the school website, which is kiwiprotos.com forward slash school. You can go there. I also have other classes, courses, and information there. Um, you know, I have gardening classes. I have... Um, we have a hemp webinar on there. There's um, oh, it's a number of classes, and I'll have soon. I have a mushroom class up there that you guys can register for if you're interested in learning how to grow mushrooms. Um, and so I'm just adding stuff as you know I see fit. I have a class showing you how to actually grow watermelons. Um, have a hydroponics class on there. Um, so it's a lot of different information as well as all these lives, I try to upload them. I kind of behind. I try to put them all on there and any, any information that I use during those lives, I try to add that to that so you guys have access to that information. <clears throat> all right, so if you have any questions, I'll answer them now. But if you have any questions after I'm done with the live, you can contact me at my email, urbanfarmsister at gmail.com, or you can find me on social media, which is on Twitter. I'm on Twitter, Facebook, YouTube, and um, Instagram under Urban Farm Sister. Uh, you can visit the website. The school website, again, is kiwiproduce.farm forward slash school. Or you can visit my normal website, which is kiwiproduce.farm. And if you also want to visit Agricademy, that's agricademyinc.org. <clears throat> so any other questions about lady beetles, true bugs? Anybody got have an idea of a beetle they may want to write about. Beetles are very interesting. Um, there's all different types. 
I don't want to give you guys any any clues. Um, but there's there's some that I really you know I'm really interested in as far as the some that are pests. I did some research with some beetles that you know infest beehives. So I want to look that one up. Um, then there, you know, some beetles are, you know, uh, decomposers and things like that. So, I mean, beetles, they cover a lot of different areas as far as it pertains in the environment. <clears throat> All right. So if you guys, nobody has any other questions, make sure you subscribe to my YouTube channel. If you want to become a patron, you can do so by uh, visiting patreon.com forward slash urban farm sister. Or you can, if you don't want to become a patron, but you still like to contribute to my channel, you can give give to my cash app, which is uh, dollar sign Nadia Ruffin. Or if you want to contribute on uh, PayPal, you can do so by uh, visiting, or you can send it to my email, which is Nadia Ruffin at uh, gmail.com. Hold on. This is my PayPal, Nadia Ruffin at gmail.com. Um, so I'll just wait a second, see if anybody has any questions. Uh, Frank Williams, you had sent me a message, uh, and you said, will I be, um, doing a forum? I didn't understand, I didn't understand what that question meant. What type of open forum are you asking about, Frank Williams? All right, maybe you left. I'm not sure. Um, but yeah, I'm not sure of the forum, so maybe he'll come in and answer or not. But that's the end of the presentation for today. I know it was a little shorter than normal. Um, I mean, it wasn't a lot of information I could talk about as far as the beetles. I didn't want to bore you guys to death. I mean, I get excited talking about insects, but I didn't want to bore you guys. Um, I just wanted to get the pertinent information out there so you guys will stop killing, number one, the larva, and number two, Asian lady beetles, um, because you guys didn't understand. <clears throat> oh, you want to have an open question and answer as far as farming, at gardening stuff? I mean, I can do that, yes. I can do that one day this week or something. If it's, you know, about farming and gardening and things like that or insect questions. I did it back in March. Okay, uh, yeah, let me figure out what day I can do it on and um, I'll, I'll post it. You, you'll see it show up in the, uh, you know, upcoming live streams. <clears throat> Have you started your garden yet? But yeah, I can do that. So it'll probably be um, maybe Thursday or Friday that I'll do that in the evening. Um, okay. All right. Yeah. So definitely I'll do it because you need to at least get it started soon. Because um, we're in May now. Uh, depending on where you are, though, some places have snow and all that other stuff. So, um, but yeah. I can do that so you guys, if you have any questions for gardening questions or farming questions or insect control questions, I can uh, I can do that this week. <clears throat> All right, y'all. So thank you for signing in. Um, again, don't forget to subscribe to my YouTube channel. 
that would help me out a lot. Um, and I'll see you guys again. I have Ash. Oh, I have a uh, live coming up on Tuesday. Uh, Aaron Olinger is going to be back on here. He's going to talk about uh, how to um, uh, set out a book, set up a bug out bag uh, for emergency situations. So I'll be posting that this evening. Um, it'll be Tuesday at seven. And then I'll do this question and answering on Thursday or Friday. And then on Sunday, I'll have another live discussing another topic. Um, but again, guys, thank you for joining me this evening. Have any questions, you can email me over at gmail.com or find me on social media. All right, guys, have a good night. Bye-bye.